How's everything? Good. I think the, the real thing that we're trying to emphasize, you know, this week with our players is uh, to really pay attention to detail. Uh, I think about this time of the year is when players get a little bit tired of practicing. They get a little bit bored of same kind of repetitions over and over and over, doing a lot of the same drills. Um, but, you know, you can't get uh, lose your focus. And because when you do, you don't pay attention to detail. You create bad habits, uh, which they start showing up on the field. Uh, so that's something we want to avoid at all cost. So um, especially in a, a big rivalry game like this game this week against Tennessee, um, I think that, you know, our players – need to know that first thing they're going to get asked 20 years from now is what was your record against Tennessee? And then the next thing you're going to get asked is what was your record against Auburn? So, um, you know, those games are big games to our fans. This game is a big game because it's the game that we're having this week. It's a rivalry game. Um, and like I said before, I think this team has – much improved and kind of a team on the rise. We're looking forward to, you know, the environment in the stadium, first night game of the season. I know our fans will be excited about playing this game, and I know our players certainly appreciate, you know, the enthusiasm and the support that they have in uh, helping them play their best. Just what changes in Tennessee's defense have you seen since Derek Ainsley took over, and what do you think about the job that he's done as their defensive coordinator? Well, I think he's done a really good job. You know, we've always thought a lot of DA. Um, I, I don't see a whole lot of different stuff. Um, I mean, I'm, they do a few things, I guess, a little different. But I see a lot of the same things that uh, are things that are similar to what we do here. Um, so, but I'm sure he's, I, I tell you what, they're extremely well coached, uh, regardless of what they're doing. And, and I, I definitely think that, uh, he's probably contributed, you know, a great deal to that. Just wonder if there was an update on Will Reichard going into this game. Uh, he kicked some today, so it's day to day. He punted yesterday. Uh, he kicked some today. So we have to manage it based on the symptoms. You know, it's kind of like Doc told me when I was coming off my hip surgery. He said, it's great to do the rehab. You work. I know all your life you've been taught to push, 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 push. I keep working, you know, when it hurts, you work through it. But he said, for one time in your life, when you hurt, when it hurts, you got to stop. Right? And that's kind of how we got to manage this injury with him. You know, if it hurts, we got to stop. We got to make sure that he continues to make progress and we don't have a setback. And, and I think so far we've been able to do that. So we'll just see how he progresses day to day. Jeremy Pruitt was sorry. Jeremy Pruitt was very complimentary of Pete Golding and the job he's done with the linebackers this year. How has he approached the developmental process and the coaching process with them thus far? Well, you know, Pete's a very bright guy. I think he has really good relationships with his players. Uh, I think he's been put in a really, really difficult situation uh, because, you know, what players that develop and what has happened here in the past, you know, on both sides of the ball is the older players always help the younger players tremendously. I mean, they, the, they, they, the guys that have been playing and have knowledge and experience and all that, they set a good example. They help the guys. They teach them how to understand concepts uh, of what we're doing uh, from a player standpoint. And, uh, you know, Dylan Moses was, you know, really, really good at that. And he was really good for the young players. Uh, and what Pete's been sort of, once Dylan – got hurt, you know, we don't really have an experienced player at that position, right? an older guy or a young guy. So we don't have that guy that's, that sort of can, you know, be a little bit of a mentor to the young guys to help them develop. And Pete has had to do that from scratch, you know, kind of on his own. And I think he's done a really, really good job with those guys. Um, has much more patience than maybe I do uh, relative to – how, how he teaches. Um, so he's, I think he's done a really good job. I want to take you down memory lane a little bit. 2000, LSU is playing Tennessee. Game goes to overtime. Tennessee was ranked and you beat them. How big of a win was that for you at LSU? And 
did it kind of change the way that you handle quarterbacks moving forward? Uh, you know what? The only thing I remember about that game, and, and I remember that we went in overtime. I remember when we won. I remember it was a really, really important game. But you're talking about, what is that, 18 or 19 years ago, right? I remember having two Louisiana State patrolmen that were by me, which was pretty much a thing in the Southeastern Conference and in the South. And in the Big Ten, we never had that. You know, the coach never had it at Ohio State. I never had it at Michigan State. You know, the head coach never had it when I was a defensive coordinator. So I was like, you know, why do I need these guys? Uh, and when we won that game and the fans stormed the field, I was so thankful and grateful that I had those guys. <laughs> and I've never lost appreciation for them ever since. Uh, so that's, that's my number one memory, you know, from that game. Uh, but it was a huge game, uh, no doubt. Tennessee had a really good team. What about Ali Kaho makes him so successful on special teams? And are there special traits that you look for it, with, with a special teams player that makes them excel at that part of the game? Well, first of all, you know, Ali's a really, really good competitor. He really gives great effort and plays hard in everything that he does. Um, and, and I think... You know, he contributed all last year on special teams, and he sort of developed into a guy that has, you know, really good knowledge and experience. You couple that with his energy and intensity and attitude that he plays with on special teams, which some guys don't see the value in that. Uh, the combination of those things, I think, can make him very effective. Uh, you know, we think he's a very good football player on defense, and, um, you know, he's missed some time a little bit around here, and that's sort of not helped his development in terms of knowledge and experience and it would certainly help us if we can get him to that point because he's a good football player on defense as well. Well, sir, what, what do you want to see in uh, Chris Allen taking that next step being a complete player? Chris Allen. Chris Allen. Um, you know, Chris Allen is a very talented young man. Uh, I think, you know, Chris sort of sometimes needs to develop just a little bit more maturity about how he goes about his work in terms of the very thing that I talked about before about guys always being focused, always paying attention to detail, always trying to do the little things right. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, Chris, older players sort of see the importance in that. Sometimes younger developing players, they're kind of learning that as they go. And I think that's kind of where Chris is in his development. And I think once he gets that, he's going to be a very, very good player. He's played very well for us this year. We're not disappointed in him. But we do think that with a little more of that type of chemistry mentally for him, he will even do better.